Hi guys, I'm just messing around. Anyway, I thought I would show you some of the stuff I get into and up to while I'm like playing around. Anyway, I've been messing with putting together a bunch of hand mixed um, eyeshadows. And you can get really funky if you want to. And 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 this little digital scale runs about fourteen bucks. If you really want to get persnickety and write down your amounts, it's not necessary. It's fun, but it's not necessary. Um, things that are necessary. are things like this stuff fractionated coconut oil or jojoba oil or almond oil or pretty much anything that you could think of that's a light weight um, would be classified as a carrier oil that's the oily bit that you put in. And it's usually only a few drops. So, yeah, you put in a few drops of the oil. And then you need some alcohol. The alcohol needs to be minimum. Minimum, 70%. In the now you can get really crazy and you can get a bunch of these little widgets these little trays are actually weeding trays but they're like a huge stack of them huge stack for a couple of bucks they're just little, these are the plastic version. They also have a metal version. Um, one of the things that these little trays are good for is if you do something like taking one of the LA Colors loose pigments that you can get at like Dollar Tree sometimes and you get really violent and crack it open like I've done with two here. This one, the bottom popped out. This one, the little funnel thing busted. I just took some square nose pliers and stuff down in it and went crank, crank, crank. Um, you could do it with a screwdriver, whatever. But there, if, if you haven't really used much of the uh, the pigment that's in these little jars, you get quite a lot. And I use these little fancy trays so I can get into a Ziploc bag. I use small ones. I have these left over from other stuff. Some of the like the the jewelry components that I was using to do the jewelry in one of my other videos. Um, it's the acrylic tunnels that I have that I was putting on the back of some of my um, post earrings. Anyway, these little trays are great for getting stuff into a little bag. You just put one corner in, since it's a tricorn, and then you've got it bagged up so you don't have to use it all of this. Now, you don't have to get even mildly crazy. Okay, now, 
this little wood. This is a single pan presser. They fit. It fits right here in this little pan. So you can press your pick. Say, fits. Fits nice. Fits real nice. Wah -ha -ha. What I, now, I ordered these on AliExpress. Okay, AliExpress for cosmetics can be iffy. But little things like an acrylic presser, not so bad. Okay, not so bad. Now, I wasn't sure what the sizes were when I was looking at the, um, the bits and pieces. And I figured, hey, what the heck? They're like 75 cents. So I got several sizes. Got the wee binky one, and this one, and then this one. And it's like, yeah, I'm good. I can like press and press and press and press. Now, this one is only a tiny, tiny bit bigger than this one. But then I've got these two little winky. At 75 cents a piece, I'm not complaining. It did take me a while to get them because, you know, Elliot's price. I ordered online and picked up some El Cheapo plastic syringes. Basic, straight lure, no needles. Never had them. Weren't intended for it. These are for craft. They're very flimsy. And I'm just going, okay, I could use these little pans, the little tricorn pans. I said, well, tricorn pans. Or I've got some little silicone bowls. They're not as small. They're not as, you know, you can't do things like stick corner in a bag but it's a silicone bowl you can do this to pour. now these are actually from a slime set so with them come stir sticks For a couple of bucks, I got silicone versions of one of these. They come in a 10 pack. I think I, sp I, I, think I, sp I paid three bucks for it. You, know, you don't have to have great pork and huge amounts of stuff. You can take stuff like the LA colors, or like if you've gotten single samples of things, or single eyeshadows, or whatever, and you want to play with them. It's easy to get, you know, all you need is a little bowl and something to mix it with. Now, when I first got started doing this, I didn't have the little presser thing yet. This is one of the little metal discs that is normal that norm, normally goes with the uh, magnetic palettes. If you have if you happen to have a single that's in a pan that's not magnetic, and it comes with the little 3M stick them on the back except this one came naked it's got nothing it never had it and if you look it fits right in there so once you get the stuff in you can use something like this to press with you don't need a 
fancy ear. Now, some people use paper towel or whatever. I happen to have scrap fabric all over the place. I had a bunch of scrap muslin that I hacked up. And I've got a stack. And it's like, okay, yeah, they're kind of ragged and ratty, but once they're too stained that I, to the point where I don't want to use them, or if they get too embedded with color and I can't get it washed out so that it's not transferring to other colors, I can pitch them out. It's just cotton fabric. Not a big deal. Now I have some smaller ones that are real skinny because sometimes you end up with just way too much alcohol floating around on the top of your pan. You just set this on top or just set a corner in and pop it a little bit down into the alcohol so it'll wick off. And then you can get around to using the larger ones for, for pressing. But this just like kind of speeds up the process by getting some of the excess alcohol. Now I've got some of the mica powders that I picked up. Let's see, mica powder, multiple colors. Woohoo! And this was not expensive. It's not. But you've got stuff to play with. There's actually between the two boxes of materials that I picked up. There's Inca Gold, Maya Gold. That one's Buttercup. There's another gold. I'm trying to They've actually got Inca Gold, Mayan Gold, and Aztec Gold. Three distinctly different shades of gold. Okay? I mean, look at the difference there. You've got one that's very dark and one that's paler. The Aztec Gold is kind of a middling shade. And I mean, you can get some funky colors. Metallic burgundy. I mean, yeah. And they've got some pre-mixed nifty stuff, too. Like Mirage Purple. Which has got a, it's a white with a purple shift. Mirage Blue. And they have a mirage red and a pearly white. The colors are fun. You can play with them. And it doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. Now, if you want to stretch them out, you can use mica powder to stretch out the shinies or you can use um, titanium dioxide to stretch out the mats. Now I have tried working with mats. I got some samples of matte colors. I got Oxides that have things like tan and mustard yellow and chromium and magnesium and black iron and all that stuff. And then I got some specific colors in a sample pack. Now, this whole thing cost me 15 bucks for all these things. There were eight of the oxides 
and six of the die colors. Now, blue, orange, red, and a green. Now, the green, the chromium oxide, please, if you start doing this and you go after things like the mats and the base mineral stuff, read the instructions. Really, chromium oxide is safe for use on in cosmetics unless it's on the mouth. It is not safe for lip balm, lip you know, lipstick, lip gloss. Yeah, it's a great green. It really, it's beautiful. It's intense. But it is not safe for putting it somewhere where it's going to be ingested. Just, no, not, not, not. Now, one of the other things that I got when I was getting little things is if you've ever seen the little teeny tiny measuring spoons, you know, a tad, a dash, an inch, they actually have little teeny tiny measuring spoons that will give you little teeny tiny measures. This one's a smidgen. A smidgen is one thirty second of a teaspoon. And then there's the drop. A drop is 1 64th of a teaspoon. And the largest one is a tad. A tad is one quarter of a teaspoon. Okay? And then it goes down from there. It's if you're trying to, to like keep track of what you're putting in and how much of whatever you're putting in. You've got you you can use these to measure your powders or you can put the powders in one of these little trays and use your little scale and do it by grams. Which, you know, unless you're trying trying to develop something that you're trying to go for sale some of this stuff is going to be just not worth it the other thing is the binder oil that you use does not have to have the does not need to be the really fancy, expensive stuff that's got the preservative in it. You can get away with not using the preservative. You can. But not if you're going to sell it. If you want to make your own stuff, you can choose to not use the one with the preservatives. That's up to you. I'm not using the one with preservatives because I'm not really making that much at a time. Now, the little yellow sheet down is a silicone crafting mat. Let me tell you how handy this is. It keeps my table from getting really nasty because I do this out on the dining room. I don't have enough room in the space that I do my regular filming. For one thing, it's a tiny desk in my bedroom because that's where my main computer lives. I'm currently doing this on a little Chromebook. We will cross our fingers that this works. Anyway, got basic from the drugstore, alcohol, 70%. The, the biggest thing about the difference in percentage 
is that the higher the percentage, the quicker the alcohol evaporates. You don't want 50% though, because it's just, yeah, it, it's not worth the hassle. Now I've got this little syringe that's got the oil in it. You only need a few drops at a time. I've got some cardboard cutoffs from just, you know, like ox edges and stuff that I use to set things down on because like I've got a oily spot over here from where I originally set the syringe down and it's like if they once they start getting really gnarly I can toss them. Yes, I could do tossums with the little cloths that I use. But paper towels are actually expensive when you're tossing them all out that much. I can wash these, and when they finally give up the ghost, then I can do this. Multiple reuse. It's kind of like with the, the syringes. It's like I can multiple reuse them over and over. It's like with the... The one that I put, get the oil, that I've got the oil in, I go to wash them. A little Dawn does an amazing job, okay? Now, you see this little fancy gold spoon? This came with one of my sets of pigments. It was in the box just to be cute. Now, I'm going to take some of the gold that I'd already bagged up. I'm going to put it over here in this little thing, in this little tray. Like I said, you don't need tons. I can get several Um, pans worth out of one of those little jars. See, that's what's left. And if you're wondering what I'm wearing, I have this old chef's coat that we picked up. I think it was at a thrift store and it's it's kind of holy and yeah it's white but who cares it's protecting my clothes if i had good sense we know where we're going with this right if i me had good sense i would have gloves on i don't like it <laughs> it makes it harder for me to maneuver my awful little hands. Alrighty. Get one of my stir sticks. First thing I put in is a little bit of oil. And I'm talking about little bits, drops. Two, three, four. Start slow with the oil. You can put more in. You cannot take it back out. And I just kind of start mixing it around. If it runs, if the oil runs for the corners, just push the pigment up towards it. And keep mixing. Because what you're looking for is something that looks kind of like wet sand. You know, it's kind of clumped together, clumps together a bit like wet sand on the beach. You know, that place we haven't been able to go for like 
a year. God, I hope this stuff is done soon. I'm going to put just a couple more drops of oil. One, two, three, four. Now, if you end up putting too much oil in, you're going to end up with something that's kind of gummy. No fun. And you end up trying to take more pigment and more pigment and more filler and more filler trying to get it worked out so that it's workable into a viable eyeshadow which is kind of a waste of materials you end up with several pans so, like I said, take it slow with your oil a little bit at a time. Just a little at a time. Now, see, we're starting to look kind of like wet sand here. I don't know how well you can see this. That's the puppies. That's my son's puppies. One of them is a cane corso. If you're not familiar with a cane corso, it's an Italian mastiff. She's gorgeous. But she's still just a baby. She's not full grown yet, and she sounds like that. And then the other doggy is part blue tick hound and part pit. He definitely took after the hound could shape his head and his voice. Pretty dog. Okay, now this one is the alcohol. The alcohol, if you get too much alcohol in, it's not such a big deal. It really evaporates. But let me tell you, it makes stuff sloppy. don't need a lot you're just trying to get it so that it comes together kind of like batter you know it's kind of like you've squashed the butter or whatever fat you're using in biscuits in and then you're dropping in the alcohol instead of water or buttermilk or whatever you use for the biscuits to make the wet so you can mash it together so it holds together. See? Stuff like that there. Now I usually try to get it just a little bit wetter than because it's easier to level it out in the final pan. Sometimes I get it a little too wet and I'm like pouring it instead of just moving it. Three drops. Get it a little wetter. Because you do want to be able to smear it around in the pan so that it sits fairly level. Now, I have a tendency because these 
little stir sticks are a little thick. They're fine for stirring, but when I want to scrape corners and stuff, the metal ones work a little bit better. Lump. Now, I try not to mix up like a great horking huge amount because, like I said, this doesn't have a preserving. And I don't want to have to throw out tons of perfectly good material if I don't have to. Mash it down a little bit there. Put a little more alcohol in. That's a little more than I wanted, but hey, I'm trying to get it so that it. is easier to get smeared around to the edges of the pan. So, it's not such a bad deal. Just kind of mash, mash. Mash, mash, mash. Yeah, I know. It looks kind of like bubble right now. Yuck. Oh, poop. Oh, look. Little bitty piece plastic from the jar. All right. Now, this is the same thing you would be doing if you wanted to franken shadow a bunch of your depotted palettes or anything like that. You would just be busting them out of their pans, mixing them together, and then, you know, you've got, got your colors together, and it works pretty well to do, like, three presses. You do the first couple really lightly. You're just trying to suck up the excess alcohol. And trying to, you know, kind of level the pain. That kind of thing. This is the other thing that's nice about the cloth. You can grab it and use it to help get your presser back out. And your press doesn't have to be perfect. Now, if you really want something kind of pretty, you can do your final press with like a piece of lace or some pattern ribbon. You know, 
little things like that. If you really want. That's up to you. The press is not necessarily going to be really pretty. I mean, this is not a machine. It's just little inexpensive pans that you can pick up online pretty cheaply. Got a little piece of thread. But like I said, the, the pressing is not necessarily perfect, but it works. You've got that pretty firm, see, I dropped it, pretty firmly in the pan. And it's still wet, but you can take a little swatch just to see. And yeah, you need to let it dry now. Most people suggest letting it dry overnight. I think that's a good idea. That's me. You can do what you want, but that's the basics. I mean, the same thing, you know, I've got this pretty purple here. And I've got, to prevent cross-contamination, I've cleaned this little scoop spoon off. I've set aside the pressing rags that I've already used. Have that back in. I've got a whole different little tray. This is the little tray that I actually dump the color out in when I first bust the little jar and say, here, let's do this. Now see, I've got several little jars, different colors. This one is called Honeysuckle. It's kind of a peachy, pinky gold. It's really weird. And this one is Lollipop. Very pinky. And this one is Snow White. You know, it's, it's pretty sweet. Start with the oil again. One, two, three, four, six. And I've got a bit more in the tray this time than I did the last time, so this may come closer to being full. When I go to press, we will see. But it's a really pretty purple. And I picked these up at Dollar Tree, guys. Sometimes you can find a pretty good collection of these at Dollar Tree. Sometimes you have to look a little bit. Sometimes you can find the silver one even. You don't always find all of their little um, color jars at the same time. 
but I love Dollar Tree. I get away with murder in there. There's stuff. And if you want to play, you can sometimes get stuff to play with without having to spend buckets of money. I like that part a lot. I like going to Dollar Tree and getting stuff. Our Dollar Tree has a pretty good craft section. It's not perfect. It's not great. I mean, you can go in there and go to their beading supplies. and Yeah, most of it's plastic. That kind of stuff. Once in a while, you can find some pretty nifty stuff. They've started carrying some really, really nice um sock weight wool it's acrylic but it's sock weight wool they've also got some worsted weight which you know it's like pink sweaters and scarves and things um they've got cotton yarn they've got knitting needles of all kinds of sizes crochet hooks of all kinds of sizes and I'm going, dang, <laughs> when did this start happening? So, yeah. And the stuff is pretty good. And if you want to do, like, hemp twine stuff, they've got it. They've even got stuff to do some, you know, lightweight scrapbooking stuff. You know, some really low-key stuff. And things like wall decals if you're trying to, like, decorate your kid's room or something. Most of the little signs and stuff that I've got all over my walls that are like the, these inspirational quotations and stuff came from Dollar Tree. The Halloween stuff, like the roses with the eyeballs, came from Dollar Tree. The Christmas stuff came from Dollar Tree. I love y'all, but I'm not spending tons on my decorations for the... Now, things like my teapots are collectibles that I've been picking up. I don't know if you want to call them collectibles. I've been picking them up at second-hand stores, thrift stores, you know, wherever I can find them. I really rarely buy brand new. I've got a really fancy one. My honey bunny got me for Christmas. That's on the brand new list. La 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 la. Nearly finished with another class. You know, the nicest thing about doing one of this kind of videos is I don't have to really get dressed up. I'm still in my jammies under this coat. No, I'm not showing you. You should be happy. You should be thrilled. 
I don't think anybody needs to see it. You want the jobs. The worst part about doing this is the clean. Because let me tell you, it can take a while to get all of this schmutz out of these little trays and stuff. You know, if I lose one of the little trays because they're so inexpensive, I'm not worried about it. If one of them breaks, I'm not worried about it. If they get stained, I don't care. Stained is not a big deal. I mean, I get stained. I just pile these up and go take them into the wash once I'm done. Once you start fiddling with the press, you can actually see kind of an outline of where the material is in the pan. So you've got a better idea. Now, I have a little problem. This thing's a little bit wonky. What do you expect for 75 cents? It's not completely level. It's not perfectly straight. Eh. So sometimes it tries to rock and roll a little bit. So it's like... See, you don't lose very much. This is the wet bed here. And that's my pressed pan. Nicely pressed in. It's still wet. But I can get a little swatch off it. And then I set it over here, out of the way, so it can dry. Now, in this carrier, I've got stuff that I've already been working with. Now, you see this down here? 
This is what happens when you get too much oil in stuff. Now, I tried really, really to do some mats. And let me tell you, anybody who bitches about mats needs to really understand how annoyingly hard formulating mats really is. I'm talking annoying, okay? I tried to do the chromium green. I got the blue This is Blue Lake number six. And that's the only map that I tried to do that came out right. Okay? And it's still not perfect. It really is. This was the chromium green and I ended up with way too much oil but there's such a small amount of the chromium green that they send you I started trying to mix some other stuff so that's the closest to a map I these are not great swatches, okay? I get that. They are not great swatches. And this one is the mustard yellow. It's an iron oxide. Let me tell you. Trying to do these is an absolute pain in the butt. And I tried to do the black iron as a mat. And I screwed it up so badly, I just finally said to heck with it and put some of the black shimmer in so that I didn't waste the entire load of pigment. And dropped a few other, like I put some, some of the curly white in. So I've got this really interesting looking charcoal gray. But let me give you a clue. It ain't right. It ain't matte. Matte ain't easy. There is a really good reason that the companies that do this stuff start off with shimmers. Really good reason. Now, well, this was a bit interesting. The rest of the video came out pretty well, and then it just stopped. So, I'm going to do my closing this way. Anyway, if you start playing with pigments, let me know. Show me some pictures. Show me some swatches. And the rest of the stuff is the usual. Behave yourselves. Stay out of trouble. Don't start any trouble. Wear your mask. Mind your manners and keep your distance. Get your vaccine if you're able to. You know, if you haven't gotten a call from the health department, and, and sign up. Go online and sign up with your health department. Check with your local pharmacy. They're starting to get in the uh, vaccine. So, you know, do the thing. You're helping other people when you do it. In all the other cases, 
Be good. <laughs>